happy to be back in the studio for the Retirement Education Hour, and we're glad you've joined us today. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Mozak. I'm here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And throughout the show, we're going to be telling you about the foundation's courses at major Michigan universities and how you can get a front row seat. These courses are designed to help you be confident about this next stage of life, how to plan for a modern retirement. We'll be giving you all of those details throughout the program today, so be listening for that. And we have a great show lined up for you today. We want to talk about something that sometimes doesn't get a lot of attention, but boy, it should, and that is asset allocation. We're going to talk about why this is really the cornerstone to any successful retirement plan. And Kirk and Paul, before we dive in, we probably need to do a little scene set here, right? What exactly is asset allocation? Well, Megan, I, so I, my guess, most of our listeners who listen to our show regularly already know what asset allocation is. I, I think our goal today is to take it to another level when we def- describe asset allocation, maybe how it applies towards retirement planning, because your asset allocation and how you look at asset allocation has to change once you're within sort of five to 10 years of retirement through retirement. So in, in our courses that we teach at all the universities, we talk about a four bucket asset allocation approach where we have bucket one is is your emergency savings. And we break down exactly how much money in retirement we need to have in our checking and savings. And we explain why that is so critical So because when we have um, poor marketing conditions, when the market is down and we have unexpected expenses, we need to be able to take money out of the bank, not out of our investments. Because the last thing we ever want to do is pull money out of our investments when the market's down. That is a pretty bad trap called sequence of return risk. Bucket two is contractually guaranteed income that we can never outlive. Bucket three is long-term growth. This is where most of all of our listeners' monies today is at. This is in your stocks, your bonds, your ETFs. You notice I didn't say mutual funds. If you want to know why you shouldn't own mutual funds, you're going to have to come to a class. And after that class, I'll make you a promise. You will not own mutual fu- actively manage mutual funds ever again. So bucket three is your stocks, bonds, ETFs. This is long-term growth. And then bucket four, asset allocation bucket four, is legacy. And legacy isn't just the kids, but it's the surviving spouse. What are the things we need to do to make sure we're protecting our surviving spouse from a massive tax time bomb they're going to experience that none of you probably are aware of? And then how do we protect the children once you both pass away so that we don't actually disinherit them or end up leaving half of our money to an ex-son-in-law or daughter-in-law because we didn't do proper beneficiary designations and set things up properly. So when we talk about asset allocation, this is sort of how we set the stage. In today's show, our goal is we're going to break down a little bit more specifically how to look at each one of these allocations differently because of retirement. What's going to drive your performance is different in retirement. So we want to explain that. You know, Kirk, one of the reasons why I love this show is because I think, as you said, most people think of asset allocation in a very narrow way, right? And what we're going to do, hopefully, is expand people's understanding, especially for those people retiring, that when we're talking about asset allocation, It applies to many more things that people realize, and the impact of doing poor asset allocation has much greater significance to your retirement than I think most people know. So I think this is a topic that's really going to hit home for people, especially those who are planning on retiring in the next five to 10 years. I think this is a really important topic. And, and I know we're going to, you know, this again, these are things that we talk about in our class that we really, you know, have the opportunity to have a a deeper dive. So let's talk about the class for a second. Yeah, if you'd like to register for the class, um, we're teaching these eight-hour courses. They're taught at just about every major university around Michigan. All you have to do to attend is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. So, you know, Kirk, I think what's going to be helpful in this show is is to explain the different levels or different ways of thinking about asset allocation, right? I think most people think of asset allocation really in terms of, you know, 
you know, sort of a macro level, th- bonds and stocks, right? A 70-30, a 60-40 portfolio. But when we talk about allocation, especially in the class, what we teach about allocation, it's a lot more about income planning, right? How do we make sure that you're taking money, income from the right accounts at the right time so that you're never exposed to significant risk? And that's a lot about asset allocation. And, and you know, we're going to talk about buckets within buckets. And it really is about making sure we are preventing what is, what, what is probably the greatest risk, which is sequence of return risk. So, I think what's going to be good about this show is we're going to expand people's understanding of a topic that most people think about, but don't really understand the implications in retirement. Paul, I think you said that perfectly. Uh, you know, there is a, there is a, there, there is this idea around asset allocation that everyone just perceives to be what you're talking about. We're, we're really going to break down income planning. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what asset allocation is about making sure you have the appropriate accounts that you can pivot to during these unexpected market events. That's what's going to drive success in retirement. It's not going to be the asset classes. It's not going to be what you invest in. It's not going to be whether it's a 70, 30, 60, 40, 30, 70. It's going to be making sure that you have accounts that you can pivot to dollars allocated to accounts that you can pivot to during times of market volatility or unexpected market events, and then pivot back when the market stabilizes again from more of your growth accounts. So I know it sounds confusing. It is very different than what you are going to hear conventionally when you go to see your advisors, when you watch CNBC or Bloomberg, or you're reading your books. What we're teaching in the class takes 60 hours to construct the plan. And that's why the classes are eight hours in length. It's going to walk you through how you map out 30 years of retirement to make sure you have the most tax efficient retirement plan from income perspective, and then make sure you have the right levers that you can pivot to during those times of volatility. So if you'd like to register for one of these eight hour classes, please go to retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation at retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. There's much more Retirement Education Hour straight ahead. Get registered for one of the Retirement Foundation's eight-hour courses today by calling 800-240-8981 or visit retirementplanningedu.org. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you've joined us here on the program today. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, talking about asset allocation today. Interesting conversation, also very important conversation. If you're getting close to retirement or recently retired, and we're going to continue this here in just a moment, but what I do want to direct you to is the website at the Retirement Education Foundation. This is where you can get registered for the foundation's upcoming in-depth retirement courses. These are university-level courses, and they're taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both campuses, Novi and Troy, or Oakland University, either a one-day course or a two-day course. That's your choice. And if you'd rather attend online, you can do that. There is a streaming option. All courses are streamed live. So go to the website now to check that out. Find a, a date, a location that works best for you, and get registered because these courses do fill up quickly. The web address is retirementplanningedu.org. Here it is again, Retirement Planning edu.org. If you'd rather register on the phone, you can do that by calling 800-240-8981. So make plans to attend. We'd love to see you there. We want to get back to the show, Asset Allocation. And speaking of this show, remember that you can listen later anywhere you get your podcast. So be sure to tune in to the Retirement Education Hour at any time. Kirk and Paul, as we talk about asset allocation, I want to find out from you how you would define asset allocation for those who are nearing retirement. So it's a little different. Uh, and so that's, and I'm glad you asked me that question because to clarify what we're going to talk about today, when we're referring to asset allocation, it isn't specifically the conventional way of thinking about it. We're really talking about it in terms of income planning, right? 
having different investments that you can pivot to during different times of market volatility, that is the type of asset allocation we're going to focus on in the class. Because, because I know, Paul, I, I know they are so caught up with the investment portion of this because that is all the financial service industry talks about. All of our listeners had the greatest 10-year decade in the history of the stock market, so they all think they're brilliant investors. There's a lot of overconfidence. The whole value proposition of the financial service industry is they can invest money better than you can. I know you don't believe us. Attend an eight hour class and you'll understand that what's going to drive your performance is your income planning. It's not how what you invest in. It's not the investments. It's where you're taking your income from during the different market conditions. And so to effectively build a retirement plan, Paul, we have to allocate dollars in different places based upon a number of different things that I think maybe we'll cover in our next segment, meaning how much risk am I emotionally able to tolerate psychologically? How much risk do I need to take to give me what I want in retirement? Right. I, I mean, that's a big one. Your focus should only be what do I need to give me what I want in retirement? <laughs> the problem is most of you don't know what you need. <laughs> you don't know if you have what you need to give you what you want. So, sorry, little soapbox, getting back on my point, the challenge in doing this is your focus has been serving money and growth, Paul. That's what they've been focused on for the last 30, 40 years. And they're going to have to have some accounts, uh, some allocations that are set up, not focused on growth, but very defensively and it's not good. It can't be bonds. You guys better have learned that in the last year. It just can't, it just can't be bond, uh, your bond funds, because they are going to get crushed when we have rising interest rates. So we have to have different type of allocations and accounts to pivot to. And that's what we're going to focus on, Paul. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I think the, the it, it sounds in some ways simple as, as I'm listening to you, right? It, the, ch the challenge is is that this is something that you actually have to plan, plot out over the next 20, 30 years, right? It's not about something you can sort of wing it today. It's something you actually have to sit down and plan out. When are you going to need income? How much income are you going to need? What do you, you know, are we, ta you know, are we taking enough income? Or are we going to periodically take one-time distributions? And of course, because we don't know what the stock market's going to do, how do we make sure that when we're taking that income, we're taking it not from accounts that are down. And none of us have crystal balls, right? That's what asset allocations, that's why it's so important. We need to make sure that we can pivot to accounts if the market's down, accounts that have none or very little volatility, and that requires a lot of planning. That requires allocating appropriately over many, many years. And, and, and cash is not the solution, right? Putting money sitting in a, you know, a half a million dollars sitting in cash just in case is not the solution, although that's what many people think. Paul, I, again, you did it again. I mean, you literally nailed it because the, here's the piece, folks. Over the next 25, 30 years, you're going to have three to seven major market events. That's the fact. And if, you are, if you're just arrogant enough to think that you are going to be able to predict those, then I don't even know why you're listening to the show. Yeah, I mean, we can't help you, right? No one's going to be able to help you because you're so smart that no one in the country right now can predict what's going to happen. I mean, you lined up the ec economists, the market experts, and they're going to give you different answers right now. Hard landing, soft landing, recession, not recession. The consumer is strong. The consumer is not strong. Personal balance sheets are falling. They're not falling. It's so There's so much mis mixed up information and different opinions. The thing you should learn if you're really listening, if you're really willing to listen right now and get away from your confirmation bias, just listen, you're going to hear nobody knows anything. That's a fact. Nobody knows what the markets are going to do. There are no really good portfolio managers for any extended period of time. No one beats the S&P 500, period, right? So... The problem is you can't have a retirement plan based upon an S&P 500. You have to have different 
buckets of money to pivot to when we have these unexpected market events that no one will ever be able to predict. And then you have to be able to predict some life events that are going to occur over the next 25 to 30 years, which we talk about, that you're probably not even aware of yet, to be able to prepare and plan for. Because we don't know what the market environment is going to be like when those life events occur. So attend one of our eight-hour courses. They're taught two evenings, four hours each evening, or one full Saturday. We teach them at just about all the major universities. To register, all you have to do is go to retirementplanningedu.org. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity to attend. Register at retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And this is the Retirement Education Hour. So glad you've joined us today on the program. We're talking about asset allocation and what that means for your retirement and how impactful it can be to having a successful retirement really is the cornerstone. And we're going to talk more about that here, but we first want to make sure you're registered for the Foundation's upcoming retirement courses. These are university-level courses, and they're taught throughout the state at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both at the Novi and Troy locations, or Oakland University. And you have the choice. You can either attend for a one-day course, or you could attend over the course of two days. You can also view it online. You can attend with a streaming option. All of this is outlined at the website, so I want to direct you there. Simply go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can find a date that works best for you and make plans to attend. Get registered, or you can call to register, 800 240 8981. We're going to get back into asset allocation with Kirk and Paul. And we want to remind you that the Retirement Education Hour is available via podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. So be sure to keep that in mind if you want to listen to a show on your own time at a later date. Now, Kirk and Paul, as we talk about asset allocation, I'm learning a lot. And you know, when we talk about risk, how do we establish the amount of risk we would want in our assets as we're in retirement, getting closer to retirement? Well, Megan, that's an interesting question. I can tell you what the general rule is, and I I hope for those of you who have been listening to our shows for a while, understand who 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 the general rules are being spoken to. So remember, and, I, and I'll say this every show, the average baby boomer, the average person who retires today will retire saving about $200,000. That's what they have. 40% of people, all they have is Social Security. So if you have $1 to $10 million, which is frankly the majority of people listening to our shows, the general rules don't apply. That, and, and that's what we don't teach the general rules in the class. And so What we teach you around how to allocate your investments in retirement starts by understanding what your risk tolerance is. Stop letting the financial service industry label you as a conservative, a moderate conservative, a moderate moderate aggressive, or an aggressive investor. Stop because none of you know what that you have no clue what that means. Just to give you some perspective, a moderate investor in 2008 would have lost. 28 to 32% in 2008 with a moderate 60-40 portfolio, okay? So instead of using labels, come up with the number. And the number of how much you're willing to tolerate losing needs to be driven by, how it will I change my behavior, my spending behaviors, my life, not go on vacation, not do home improvement, not retire, if my portfolio loses greater than this amount? and establish what that amount is. Is it 15? Is it 25? Is it 20? Is it 30%? Whatever it is, and if you're married, compromise. Maybe one of you are at 25, the other one is at at 17. Well, then compromise at 22, all right? Compromise and start there. And if you have any competent help, they can construct your portfolio to never exceed that drawdown, that amount of loss ever in any three standard deviation event. 
Therefore, you're setting yourself up to succeed, not fail. The second you know, piece of this, and I'm going to pass it to Paul here in a minute, but, and, 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 and I'll come back to it, Paul, if you want to talk about something else, but is knowing what you need to give you what you want. Warren Buffett said it. You have to be insane to risk something you have for something you don't need. So you got to establish how much do I need to have to give me what I want in retirement, and that then will determine what your allocation should and how much risk you should take. Paul, sorry. No, I no, it's okay. I, I mean, I, I just want to go back because, because you know, I think the point you made a minute ago is just really important, you know, which is, you know, you need to know how much you can tolerate. You know, we, we talk about, we use the term drawdown. How much will you tolerate when the market goes down before you panic? And, and, and I, there are two, two I, think, I think probably more variables that are going to impact this. Obviously, part of this is you, who you are, right? Some people just tend to be more reactive than others. Some people are just more anxious than others. Some people panic quicker than others. But the other piece of this is there's a big difference between you when you're working and when you retire, right? We hear this all the time. People say, well, you know, in 2008, the market was down almost 50%. I didn't panic, right? So, you know, people wear that, it's like a badge of honor, right? They're so proud of them, and they should be. But what you do when you work and you have a paycheck will be very different than what you do when you retire. So you got to think about how will you react? When will you panic when you don't have a paycheck coming in? And that is a very different story. So your psychology and if you're working or not have a lot to do with that, how much you can tolerate when the market goes down. And those are things you have to consider. (laughs) So Paul, so everyone knows that Paul's my brother in my whole life. He's done this is I will ramble on about things and throw no. darts no. at the dartboard. No, seriously. And I'll be all around the bullseye. Then Paul will come in and in like three, like in 60 seconds, nail what I rambled on about for four minutes, literally. So he's right. He's 100%. Your relationship with money is going to change once you retire. Someone else isn't sending you a paycheck every week. You have to send yourself a paycheck. And oh, by the way, once you retire, you should set up your income on a monthly basis automatically setting you a paycheck. It will help the psychology Paul talked about. But your tolerance for market events, for elections, for everything is going to change as you age, as no one else is paying you a paycheck, as cognitively things change and it becomes just just more fear. You're more vulnerable. You get more scared as you get older. So to set yourself up for success You need to know what you need to give you what you want first. And two is make sure you're allocating your portfolio to not exceed what your tolerance for loss is that would cause you to change a behavior. Because we're going to have these short-term market events that are going to occur throughout your whole retirement. You can't change your spending life and spending behaviors every time it happens. Despite what the financial service industry tells you, telling you to protect your principal, which is silly. Protecting your principal just means they're protecting their their income, the advisor's income. So come to one of our eight-hour classes. We're teaching them at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. It's always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And throughout the show today, we've been telling you about the foundation's university-level courses. And these are taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi and Troy campus, or Oakland University. And these are really designed to help you gain confidence as you think about retirement. They're going to break down what you need to do to plan for retirement, what's involved, all of the moving pieces. And boy, a modern retirement, it takes modern solutions. It is not your grandfather's retirement. And so we want you to attend. In fact, we want you right there in the front row so that you can get this download and feel confident and enjoy retirement. So here's how to register. Go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call 
to get a seat, 800-240-8981. We've been talking about asset allocation with Kirk and Paul today. And as we dive back into the show, I want to remind you that if you'd like to listen to this show anytime, you're welcome to do that. You can find it anywhere you get your podcasts. Now, on this, the, the topic of asset allocation, Kirk and Paul, you know, I heard you guys make a comment that your risk, when you establish that, it's really driven by how much growth you need, right, to get what you want in retirement. I want you to break that down a little bit more for us. Well, you know, it's funny, Megan, because I used an analogy. We taught a couple of classes this past week, and I mean, amazing the amount of people who are attending our class. We are way over 100 people between the two classes. And actually, I think both of them were full for in person. So great energy, right? And one of the analogies I used in that class was talking about today's retirement feels a lot like you, that football coach, right? You've got a football coach who has a system. They have their plan, their system. And it's irrelevant to them what talent their players have, right? It doesn't matter that they have new players with new talents and things are different now, they're going to still force you to use their system. And it's the reason why it often fails. And when I look at the retirement industry right now, the financial service industry for retirees and those approaching retirement, I see it failing. I know it's failing. It's why we started this, this course 10 years. I mean, this, this uh, charitable program 10 years ago to help educate you to Find the best system for the players you have, right? So all of you have these different pieces, these different players, and the market environment has totally shifted in the last year. Not a little, a lot. We went from the three-month treasury bill paying less than 20 basis points, less than one quarter of 1%, to paying over 4%. Interest rates have spiked. The whole game has changed. Every playbook that exists out there should be shredded and a new playbook should be designed for you to be able to win in this new environment. And no one's doing that. Our financial service industry does not pivot because it is not profitable to customize. It's cookie cutter, one size fits all. That's everyone gets. And honestly, our fear for most of you, most of the people who attend our class, we know who's attending. Most of you have investable assets of over a million dollars. You tend to be highly educated engineers, do-it-yourselfers, CEOs, CFOs, CPAs. Our fear for that segment of this baby boomer group is that you're not going to outlive your money. And I know that's your fear. Your fear is you're going to outlive your money. Uh, we know you're, th th you're not going to outlive your money. Our fear for you is going to way underspend what you otherwise should be spending because you don't realize how much you have and what it'll do for you. And no one's telling you that because the whole system is rigged to get you to spend less money. The less money you spend, the more money the financial service industry and the advisors make. It's that simple. That's where protect your principal came from. Protect your principal so I don't have to plan for you. So you'll self-regulate. So I don't have to work to manage things properly for you so that you won't spend the money so my income in the financial service industry's income doesn't go down. So the first step you have to make is, and we help you do this in the class, is to identify do you have what you need right now to give you what you want? And then everything needs to change. If you have it, why would you, you've won the race, you've won the competition, you've won, why do you keep insisting on going back 10 miles and rerunning it? And the reason why is because you don't know you won. You have what you need, many of you, to give you what you want. And I'll prove it to you. Do math in your head. It's really simple. If you're in your 60s, in the class, we will teach you how you can take out 6, 7, 8, even 9% per year with no chance of outliving your income. Bulletproof plan, long-term care safety nets, everything built out. So do simple math. You've got $2 million saved. You're 65 years old. You can have about $140,000 to $160,000 a year right now. Many of you are still working and you should be retired. Paul, I'm sorry. I went on a long tangent. Yeah, no, I, I mean, really it was actually, passionate and, uh, it was great. I know it was great. I, I, I wanted, if I can just, I mean, what sort of, what's, you, you mentioned what's behind this, right, is, is that, you know, if you, if you self-regulate, people in the industry, keep, they keep making money. One thing I just want to say is 
Fear sells. Fear gets attention. It's marketable. It motivates. And we live in a society that loves to leverage fear. And if you're afraid and you don't spend, people in our industry make money. More that's, money. <laughs> more money. Thank you. So there's a lot, a lot of messaging out there. Don't spend. Don't spend. You, you know, you're going to outlive. You're going to outlive. Part of that is self-promoting. Part of that is self-interest, sadly, as you say. And, and, and I think how many times have we sat with people in our classes and, and, and we know that they're sitting on a lot of money and they're underspending and that's just sad, right? That is just absolutely sad. And what motivates us, what motivates the charity is to see people actually live on what they can actually enjoy and enjoy their life. And that's, that's what motivates this class. Paul, it's funny because you said it, fear, right? Today's fear that is being sold and promoted is inflation, right? No, I'm not doubting. There's tons of inflation. I'm not suggesting there isn't. But they're going to tell retirees how they have to spend less now because of the fear of inflation. And that is just nonsense. Exactly. That is nonsense. We'll teach you in the class. Your spending patterns in your 80s is a, a half of what it is in your 60s. It's not even close. You won't spend any money in your 80s. But instead, they're going to promote fear of this massive inflation issue that you need to protect for the next 30 years so you don't spend any of your money so the financial service industry continues to make more money. It's fear. So come to a class. It's eight hours taught in two days, two evenings, or one full Saturday. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Much more with Kirk and Paul on the other side of the break. I'm here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Hi, everyone. Megan Mozak here. This, of course, the Retirement Education Hour. And we're glad you've tuned in today. Big topic on the show, talking about asset allocation and boy, what an impact this has on the success of your retirement. Much more to talk about on that front, but we do want to make sure that you're registered for the foundation's retirement courses. This is really where you walk away with confidence, having that deep dive into what it takes to plan for a 21st century retirement. And there is a lot. There's a lot to know. There's a lot to learn. The, the instructors there are absolutely fa fantastic. So you want to be sure to get a seat and seats do fill up quickly. So here's how to do this. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call 800-240-8981. 81. These are college level courses and they're taught at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or the Troy campus or Oakland University. And if you'd rather stream the course, you can watch it from your own home. That's your choice. So get registered today. OK, I want to get back to this conversation about asset allocation on the show today. And if you want to listen later, you're welcome to listen to this program anytime, and you can find it wherever you get your podcasts. Now, asset allocation, what is the conventional approach out there, Kirk and Paul, when people are choosing their investments? Well, especially do-it-yourselfers, what most people are doing, and before I jump in, I'm sorry, I, what I do want to say, because I heard you say it, and you've said it in a couple of our beginning of the segments, it is important for people to understand this truly is a master's level course. This is a, gonna be a fast moving, really intensive course that I guarantee that when you leave the class, you're gonna be CPAs, come to the class, CFOs, CFO for Fortune 500 companies and executives, CEOs, they come to this class. This is a master's level, moves fast, a lot of really intensive retirement planning information and you're gonna leave that class much better prepared for retirement. I promise you, it's very different than you're hearing in the general public today. So with that said, I think this goes hand in hand. When, when we meet the majority of you in our classes, that you're, you're attending our classes, consistently what we've learned is when you guys are choosing what to invest in and how to build your portfolios, what many of you are doing is the first variable you're going to look at is your net expense ratio. That's the first thing because you want the least expensive funds when you're investing. Great. I love where your head's at. That's perfect. 
Okay, first of all, I wouldn't use any actively managed mutual funds. It would be all indexes when you're younger. Um, that's all you need to do. But setting that aside, the second thing you're looking at, guys and gals, many of you are looking at Morningstar reports and the number of stars the fund you're selecting has. And in our class, we, we will reference and point you to the Morningstar study that the Wall Street Journal and Vanguard did in, in I think, in 2015 that tells you there is no correlation between the number of stars and the near-term performance. In fact, they're negatively correlated. The higher the number of the stars, the worse the near-term performance. So that isn't a good idea. And then the one that I think gets most people in trouble is they're looking at recent performance to decide. That is a terrible idea because as things do well, they get more expensive. And at some point when they're really doing well, there's going to be something called a reversion to the mean where they've gotten too expensive and they correct. And then that thing, that investment that has been underperforming, that is now cheaper, tends to perform better. And so this is where we see many of you investors, we know the data over the last 30 years, you guys are performing at about 3%. And part of that is fees, part of that's emotions. And the biggest part of that is you chasing recent performance. Look at the Kathy Wood Fund, the ARC Fund. They saw it, it. She was the superstar, right? On a cover of every magazine, being interviewed forever, hundreds of percent performance, crushing the markets. And without going into specifics, what she was doing, she was very popular. Her fund saw the greatest inflows when her fund was at the all time high. And since that fund got the greatest amount of inflows, new money, you guys putting your money in, it has now fallen 82%. So if that was your plan, for those of you who are within 10 years or five years of retirement, you just destroyed and blew up your retirement. You can't recover 82%. It's going to take you 400% before you break even. If you're down 82%, it takes you 400% to break even. You're dead. Your retirement's dead. Don't chase recent performance. That's not how you asset allocate and invest it. Paul, sorry. Yeah, no, I, 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 no, it's, it's actually not a tangent because I think as I was, you know, thinking about this subject, you know, there's a lot of people now talking about is, is asset allocation, is diversification dead, right? Why not just buy the asset class that's doing well, right? I mean, why not just focus on the sectors, the stocks that are doing well and, 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 you know, just to give one really quick example, and we, we, we can see this year after year after year, right? I remember in 2021, everyone was saying, put all your money in large cap growth stocks, right? Everybody was saying, <laughs> that's where your money should go. In fact, we would meet people in the classroom who would, who would get frustrated with the idea that, you know, we weren't recommending everybody, all, ever, all your dollars should go in large cap growth, right? What happened in 2022, Kirk? Where did large cap analyzed return go, they went from positive 27% in 2021 to a negative 29%, right? Paul, and that's just one example. There's so many examples of that. Well, you can't, me, go ahead. So, sorry, I was going to say, let me take in another step. Just take the seven top stocks in the S&P 500. The seven largest stocks in the United States, the largest ones, you know what they are. The largest seven stocks over the last 12 months has a, a negative 46% return. So anyone that tells you just choose the good companies, the large companies, the best companies, well, you're down 46% this year. That is not how you invest. Nobody knows when it's going to go up. No one knows when it's going to go down. That has never worked. And the financial service industry does not want you to know this because that's their value proposition that they know something you don't and they can pick winners and losers and they can't, not over any extended period of time. It's never happened. Show me a study, it doesn't exist. There's never been a fund manager that's been able to stay in the top quartile, the top 25% for five consecutive years in history. 40% of all mutual funds fail in 10 years. Come to the class, you'll never own a mutual fund again, I promise you. You'll own individual stocks, individual bonds and exchange traded funds. And then we'll teach you how to build your portfolio to give you the income you need in retirement. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register for one of our eight hour classes that are being taught at all the major universities, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org.
Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. We're glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour today. We've been talking about asset allocation with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we want to make sure you register for the foundation's college-level courses on retirement. These are held at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi, or the Troy campus or Oakland University. And if you'd rather watch from home, you can do that as well. They stream these courses live. So here's what you do. If you want a front row seat, go to the website. It's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call to get registered at 800-240-8981. We've been talking, as I said, about asset allocation on the show today. And this show is also available via podcast wherever you find your podcast. Now, Kirk and Paul, asset allocation is just really one component. It's a big one, but it's one component of a successful retirement plan. And really, all of this comes down to a plan, doesn't it, in terms of being ready for retirement? Well, it does. And so my struggle is, and we do this Almost every show we do, the last segment is we're trying to talk about planning and really talk about what we're going to teach in the class. And I think that a lot of people believe they have a plan or they believe they know what a plan is. And the truth is you don't. You CPAs, you engineers, your spreadsheets, your your advisors who has had an intern literally spit in, put in your information in 30 minutes that produce the e-money or the money guide pro plan. Folks, that is a probability of success is not a plan. Those are not plans. So here's my question to all of you as you listen to this and you think about attending our class. Tell me when you can retire. Do you know that? Do you have what you need to retire? Or are you guesstimating or your advisor says, yeah, I think you're good. No. Can you retire now? And then when you retire, how much income can you have? Not what do you need? Stop letting them ask you, what do you need in retirement? Your question to them should be, how much can I have in retirement? Do you know how much you can have? If the answer isn't, and you don't know this, that you can have six, seven, eight percent withdrawal rates in your 60s, then you don't have the answer to this. And then the third one is, do you know when you're going to take income from which one's different accounts you have strategically? Do you have a plan mapping that out for 25, 30 years? And do you know why you're going to be pivoting to different accounts to take your money from during different market conditions and or to minimize taxes? Do you know these things? And my guess is you have no clue and you have no plan to do this. In the class, we're going to show you, first of all, we're going to show you what it takes to build a plan that takes professionals. When I say professionals, CFAs, CFPs, CPAs, wealth managers, it takes them 50 to 60 hours to build a plan. That's what it takes. There's no software that produces it. You literally have to run iteration after iteration after iteration to find the most efficient path to minimize taxes. And if you do it right, for most people, you can save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, extending the life of your money, allowing you to have more income in retirement. And you should be able to take your six, seven, eight percent per year with no chance of outliving your income. But to do that, you literally have to map it out account by account by account by account for 30 years and then make sure you build in pivot accounts for all the different potential market events. Not trying to predict them, just having an account that you can pivot to when the market's down to pull your income out of, and then accounts you can pivot back to when the markets are up, and if the markets are flat, the account you pivot to to take your income from. It's got to be mapped out. And then, of course, Paul, what happens when someone dies, right? Yeah, no, there's, you said a lot, and I think there's so much that people have to think about when they're they're planning. But in some ways, I think there's one I think most important thing that you need to know, right? You need to know a lot. Talk about taxes, long-term care, right? All those things. But I think the single greatest thing, and it goes back to the topic at hand, asset allocation, which is do you know what you will do when the market corrects or we're in a recession so that you can keep spending everything that you're spending, keep living the life exactly the way you're doing it, but doing it without fear? 
doing it without anxiety, doing it without changing your life. Do Boom. you know what you will do? And if you do, great. And if you don't, you do not have a plan. Paul, again, <laughs> you did it to me again. I literally spoke for four minutes saying everything. Well, you, there's a lot. I mean, no, wait, wait, there's a but lot of planning, it. but that is really the key. Would you not agree that is the key? One hundred percent. What is freedom? Freedom is not changing your spending patterns every time there's a short-term market event, or if you don't like who's being elected. And none of you have that right now. I'm going to tell you right. We know this. You don't have it, and we know that you're going to underspend what you otherwise could be spending because of fear. We know you're going to continue to serve money like you have your whole life, and that's fine. That's what you're supposed to do when you're younger. Serve money so that you can save it, raise your family, put your kids through school, and then have a savings for retirement. You did what you were supposed to do, but you have to transition from serving money to letting money serve you. And you guys don't understand what that is. You're not going to be able to do it without a plan. It's why a plan takes 60 hours. It's why... For our private practice, we do a 30-minute TV show. We spend a million dollars a year just doing TV shows for our existing clients so they can understand their plans, so they can have freedom and not change their lifestyle ever during any market conditions. And knock on wood, for 20 years, none of our clients changed their lifestyle, right? So people who attend our class get this freedom. They're going to learn these things. So all you have to do, all you have to do to attend one of our courses you got to make a $29 donation to charity. It is a charitable program at the core. That is what we're doing. We're providing financial literacy, advanced financial planning for retirees. The charity does a number of other things we won't go into today, but make a $29 donation to charity. You get to attend an eight-hour course taught over two evenings or one full day. You get a 200-page textbook. If you'd like to register to come to any one of the universities or stream it live from your home, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.